Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video I'm going to create a simple button box that basically is a proof of concept for my future simple panels. And this is my simple workshop. It's not your fancy YouTube maker workshop with walls full of woodpecker tools. It's just my basement where I have an assortment of mostly cheap tools that I've picked up during the last years and stuff that I have made from scraps that I had lying around. But it's, it gets the job done. So I have this one issue with my Simbits panels. They're okay, but they're not great. And I can have none of that, not at all. There are a few, few issues. One is that they're not finished properly. Uh, I have just printed them and left them as, it, as they are. But the bigger issue is the background lighting with LEDs. I have basically white PLA blo blocks that I have painted black and dropped in the sockets. And it, it works. It, it kind of works. It, it's okay, but it's kind of clumsy and it really doesn't allow me to create any intricate, intricate details in the panels. So in this video, I'm, I'm planning a new concept for my panels and making it from the beginning to end and just plugging it, plug it in to see how it works. So there are people like the Wartok project that actually have a pre pretty good concept for the, for the panels. What he does, does is he actually have several layers, layers of acrylic sheets that he cuts with a laser cutter, then paints the transparent top layers black and uses the cu laser cutter to carve the details in them. But I don't have a laser cutter and I'm not going to buy one, they're expensive. I do have a 3D printer and I really like to use it for the uh, for panel design. So I just been wondering what could I do and I, I ended up buying a cheap second hand laser engraver. So with this I can actually still print the, print the panels myself, design them myself and print them myself. Then paint, paint them black and use the laser engraver to actually engrave the details, the text and stuff like that, so that I can still have background lighting and much more detail, much more better details in the panels. First step was to actually design the panels. I'm using Fusion 360 for, for the job. It's free for personal use and it feels intuitive for me. I'm not good with it, but I can just create the basic shapes that I need, like the panels. So it was time to fire up the 3D printer and print the panels. This is what I ended up with. This left one is just to dial, dialing down the laser power. If it isn't powerful enough, it just doesn't cut through the paint. And if it's too powerful, it starts melting, melting the plastic. So First, I need to figure out what is the best setting to actually engrave the details here. And then, when I have that done, then I have this actual panel that I'm going to use. Okay, so the first step is just a light sanding. Okay, so this is not something I'm, I'm going to do by hand in the future, but it's good enough for, for this purpose. And then I'm going to take it outside and ap apply, I think, three coats of, coat of spray paint. And we're going to cut to the moment when it's actually done and dried. Okay, so the panels came out nicely. Some scuff marks and some issues that I had there, but doesn't matter here. There are still a few issues that I have to solve at some point, like since the background is white, there might be some light leak. It wouldn't matter if all the LEDs are the same color or just that on at the same time. But if there are some differences, it might cause some issues. I might want to actually slice one millimeter slice out of this Infusion 360 and print the last layer layer black and then glue it or something like that. But that's for the future. So now it's time to start with the 
laser engraving and I have no idea how it's, this is going to end up. I'm starting with this one and I'm going, going to engrave several steps with different power so I can actually see that what, what, what is the best one out of all, all of those. I'm using light burn software so that's, that's easy to use and I can use it and naturally I'm actually going to be outside myself when I run the, run the laser engraver since these are plastic and they are painted, painted with the spray paint so it might not be too healthy to be, be near when laser is burning, the, burning this stuff. Let's see what happens. Okay, so after proper wending of the room, I'm back inside. First thing I made was a example just on a piece of plywood, just to see the layout was correct. And when that was great, I started with the with the 3D printed part. And I have to say that was quite nerve-wracking to wait outside. And after after I had had went it went it room came in and to check the result because I had no idea what to expect. I know that it should have worked, but I haven't ever tried it before. But I I have to say I'm actually quite happy with the results. I don't I don't know how well it, you can see it here, but after basically power of thirty percent, everything is great. So this is actually really really exciting. And I guess what can, what I can do next is just fire up the laser again and use it with the proper proper panel. Let's see what happens. Okay, so, so the panel is done and it also actually came out quite nicely. I'm actually really excited about this one. This is just what I was after. So. Intricate, intricate and nice details and also some shapes not just just text in some blocks this is really really great so next step is start to work with the LED lighting the way this works is that I have these holes for LEDs I let them in and then the light shines through it but but for some reason actually just noticed that these are not perfectly perfect aligned. I have no idea what happened here and that's something I need to figure out in the future but let's still see what happens. I'm going to finish this in any case. So the easiest way would be just dropping these in adding perhaps some glue if necessary this is quite loose fit here and then just soldering everything in place but the one issue here is that besides the LEDs this needs, this needs a resistor because no matter where I'm going to connect it to 9 volts or I'm actually using 12 volts you have to have a resistor here unless if you don't have you're going to burn the LEDs so instead of actually working directly with this again with the idea kind of standardizing this stuff so just print, it, print this stuff, these small bits, where I can actually connect at the LEDs, connect them on the this side at the resistor, and then just place it in the proper place, perhaps at a few drops of of hot glue here, or something like to keep it keep it in place, and then it's down. So one important thing is to remember is is to make sure that you have the positive and negative side right way around all the time all the time so let's just clean this up a bit here so just going to drop in a bit of super glue here few drops the positive side is always away from the tower here and it's here then the next one
this didn't work perfectly so I really need to widen my tolerances here a lot for the next time but for now I just decided to basically brute, for, brute force myself out of this issue with the hot glue gun so it, it is attached and I can continue my work which is, which is most important at the moment and that work means that now basically soldering these things together and just word of warning again soldering isn't one of my favorite activity activities it's not something I'm good at but I think I can at least connect a few wires together somehow so Okay, so it's time for resistors. These might not be actually the right ones, but just I'm not aiming for perfect longevity here. Just trying to do something quickly. Uh, if you're interested in calculating the proper resistors, I can. I'm using a calculator that at least seems to work. So I'm going to drop drop a drop the link in the in the description if you're interested in checking that uh, that one out. So I think it would be a good time to talk about switches because while this is basic stuff for some of you I think it might be not for everyone. This is just a basic momentary switch and it closes the circuit, circuit when I pull it and it pulls it back. I need to so make it so that the computer somehow understands that while I do this is actually the same as the pressing a button on a contro controller. There are a few easy ways you can do it. Easiest and cheapest way would be most likely you know, not the cheapest way, but easiest way would be use something like they go around the name something like zero latency arcade board or USB controller something like that. You can be you can find them from eBay and stuff like that. So it is just a basic board that you can plug the wires in here and plug it into USB port. And computer sees it as a game controller. And when you close the circuit of any any of those places it sees that you're pressing a button. Uh, one way to do it would be to use Arduino. So that would require some coding or at least copy pasting some code. And it might be even cheaper cheaper and getting a smaller Arduino fits better better if you get small one of the smaller clones. I haven't done any Arduino projects myself yet but I'm going to do at some point. What I actually use is Leo Bodner board. It's the same like the first version, so it's, it's basically a board where I connect wires and it connects to the USB board of the computer. It's easy. They seem to be quite highly regarded. I have one with 64, uh, room for 64 buttons. And when everything is finally connected, it's time to basically stuff everything inside the box that I've printed. Also, I think this self-tapping socket head screws just give the final, final touch for this panel. Then it's time to plug, plug the box in. I took it to Simpit room and this is basically the enclosure where I, I have the Leo Botner box inside the 20, 20 and 20 sockets ready for new bot button boxes that are already connected to the box in, to the board inside. Okay, so the box is now plugged into 12 volt power and I have to say, it actually works beautifully, and I can easily dim the lights with this LED dimmer here I have. And last thing to do is to see how this thing works. So, 
I have just I have opened the Trollstick Kremlin in my main window and it basically is the software that takes the commands from the any controls I have and translate them into virtual joysticks that starts this and understands. Let's try how it works. It's the button 20 and button 19. So it works perfectly. Here, here you have it. The basic button box that I'm actually going to use as a panel in later. If I would want to use this as a panel, I would just leave the leave the box away drill some holes here or where I want to and just, just screw, screw it in into the right place. But this was a, just proof of concept. It didn't go perfectly, but it's working and that's good, good enough for me for now. I'm going to make it even better and then just going to start replacing these old panels with much better looking stuff. Okay, thanks for watching and if you're interested in the simplest stuff in the future, don't forget to subscribe.